power. It can be the most destructive and abusive force known to mankind. Yet it can create healing and help for the hopeless. It all depends on the character of the one who holds the power. When Jesus called men and women to follow him, he didn't go to the powerful. He approached the weak, the nobodies of the world. Yes, I know, later there was a powerful religious leader, Saul, that he called, but Jesus first brought this religious zealot to the end of himself, where he was left powerless. It was only then that Saul could answer the call of Jesus. Jesus gave his disciples a task greater than any given to all the great leaders of the world, yet they were powerless to accomplish it. And what did he tell them to do? wait for the promise of the Father. And he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Wait, for they needed His power. This has probably been the most difficult lesson that I've had to learn. It seems that sometimes I'm so obstinate that God has to take extraordinary measures to remind me that it is His power and I must wait upon Him. That's exactly what happened when I faced a time where I had no ability to speak. After the revolution in Romania, God blessed our ministry in incredible ways. I was invited to preach in stadiums all over the world. But success can be our greatest enemy. It was for Uzziah, one of the biblical kings. When he was young, he sought the Lord and God gave him great success. But he began to think that it came from his gifts, abilities, and talents. Success and power corrupted Uzziah. It was God that had opened the way for me to preach historic meetings in Romania after the revolution. That opportunity spread to Moldova, Ukraine, Siberia, India, Africa, and Brazil. After preaching in Maracanã, the world's largest stadium in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, I began having vocal problems. They became so severe that the doctor told me I needed surgery on my vocal cords. I was devastated. Is there any other solution, medicine, anything? If something goes wrong, I'll no longer be able to do what God has called me to do. He told me there was one possibility, but he couldn't promise that it would work. He said that I would have to be completely silent for two weeks. That meant I couldn't say good morning, hello, good night, nothing. He said he would examine me after two weeks and make a determination. As you can imagine, I did a lot of soul searching during the next few days. God placed me in a position that was exactly where I needed to be. I didn't have the ability to do anything. And that's precisely what Jesus told his disciples. Without me, you can do nothing. After much prayer, I decided to be still, silent for two weeks. My wife and I determined that if I couldn't speak, then I needed to be in a place to listen, to hear God's voice. We made a trip to the Grand Canyon to spend a week doing nothing but reading our Bibles and waiting upon the Lord. Wait for His power, His strength. I sat at the top of the canyon that week, just reading my Bible with a cry in my heart. Speak to me, O oh God, I need you. And He did speak. There was one verse that kept coming to me. Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. Oh, how God spoke to my heart. He didn't need me. He didn't need my voice, my skills to make himself known to the world. He only needed me to be still and know that he is God. The prophet Isaiah wrote, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow weary and tired and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope, who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. 
He has all power. He renews the weary. He gives strength to the weak. I must never forget that it's His power and not mine. He taught me that day to seek His kingdom and His glory in His power. In silence, I learned to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and yours is the power.